Welcome to Unit 18. Unit 18, we're going to take a look at something called Avogadro's number. How do we count and work with atoms and masses and molecules and all that kind of thing? Give sort of a background on that. And so you ought to take a look at Section 5.3 before you view this slideshow. In Unit 18, a couple things we're going to look at. One is how important Avogadro's number is to us, why it's a very, very important number, how big it is, which is huge. We're going to define something called a mole. <coughs> And we're going to define a couple things called formula mass and molecular mass. We'll see they really aren't functionally different. They just, one applies to ionic compounds, one applies to molecules. But they're pretty much the same thing. So let's get an idea of what we're talking about when we talk about Avogadro's number. So in your daily life, if you go to the donut shop in the morning, you order donuts by the dozen, or two dozen, or three dozen, or five dozen, or however many donuts you want. And we all understand that 12, uh, or eggs, we go to the store and buy eggs, 12 eggs is one dozen eggs. And that's just our definition. And folks are familiar with that. So you kind of know if you have 24 eggs, you've got two dozen. We're familiar with that. Others may be less familiar. We have something called a gross. Sometimes you can buy pencils and buy the gross, and a gross is 144 of whatever it is you have. And so if I have 144 pencils, that's a gross of pencils. If I have 144 car tires, that's a gross of car tires. Uh, it's just a counting number is all it is. We also have the ream, which is most popular in paper. When you buy paper by the ream, 500 sheets in a ream. Okay, so we're familiar with those things, but what we're lacking when we look at those is those are things that are manageable, countable, workable sorts of things. When we start shifting over into talking about atoms, what we're going to find out is that in, in chemistry, talking about atoms and molecules <coughs> and things of that nature, they are so small that we cannot grab a hold of them. Well, we can. If we have lots of equipment and stuff, we can kind of grab a hold of them and do things with them, but practically we can't do much with them. So what we have to do is think about, well, how, how can we manage things? How can we handle how much material I have, how many atoms I have, if I have so many of them at one point in time? Because I simply cannot count them. And so what we do is we define a unit here called a mole. And the mole is equivalent sort of to a dozen, say it's the same roles, a dozen, a gross, and a ream up here. serves those roles. But the other thing that the, the uh, mole does for us is it allows us to be able to count out how many atoms we have, how many molecules we have, by using their masses. That's what we're going to, so instead of counting, we're going to shift and start talking about how much it is. Now to get an idea of how big the mole is, remember the atoms are really, really, really tiny, so to get enough of them to work, work with and worry about, we really have to go and, and have a whole bunch of these atoms or molecules involved. So the number is something like this. Uh, you notice you would not want to write this number out every time you had to write it out, and so at this point in time you're begging me to use scientific notation. So we can do that, and if you put a decimal point here, and you start counting back, one, two, two, three, four, five, all the way back to here, you'll find out that number is really written as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That's a huge number. You know how big a billion is? A billion is 10 to the ninth. Okay, so this is like a billion, it's like a million, billion, billion is about what this amounts to. And so you kind of have to put that in some sort of context where it's just a huge number, very hard to imagine. But it, it works. This number here, this Avogadro's number, tells me how many atoms I have in a mole, how many molecules I have in a mole, how many anythings I have in a mole. And it works the same as 500 sheets, 144 gross, 12 eggs in a dozen. has the same function. There's this many of anything in a mole of that. You could have a mole of people. You know what the population of the Earth is? What, about 7 billion? Okay. This is huge compared to 7 billion. So we have on Earth, we have a very, very, very tiny fraction of a mole of people here on Earth. So let's take a look at some examples of why it's helpful to have a number that works like this. And I have this set up a little bit differently than we did with densities. We did that dimensional analysis thing, quite honestly, because I couldn't format it in here and fit it all on one page. But we're, when we go to the next section, we'll start talking about how we work with this number. So if you go back and think about a dozen, it's 12 of whatever we want to count. And a mole is also a 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever we want to count. It doesn't matter. Okay. We're going to focus with it in, in atoms and, and molecules and things, but it doesn't matter. So let's take these things here, 48 eggs, uh, this many people, that's 6.45 times 10 to the 9th. people roughly, uh, anyway, that's 6.45 times 10 to 6.45 billion people. And I guess that's about like the, uh, about the population of the Earth. And then we have 7.45 times 10 to 24th atoms of nitrogen. Okay, remember the atom has... Uh, an atom of nitrogen has seven protons, some number of neutrons, and seven electrons in it. That's what it is. So if I want to convert these to dozen, all I'm going to do is take each number and divide it by 12, because there's 12 of them in each dozen. So I take 48 divided by 12, and I get four dozen eggs. 
I take 6.45 times 10 to the ninth people divided by 12, and I get 5.38 times 10 to the eighth thousand people. That's not very helpful. I still have just a huge number out there. And if I take 7.45 times 10 to the 24th divided by 12, again, because that's in a dozen, I have 6.21 times 10 to the 23rd dozen atoms of nitrogen in that sample. That doesn't help either. That doesn't change much of anything at all. Let's go look over here at the moles now. If I think about doing it in moles, what I'm going to do is instead of dividing by 12, like what we have in a dozen, I'm going to divide it by Avogadro's number, which is right here. And so I take 48 eggs, I divide it by Avogadro's number, I get 7.97 times 10 to the minus 23 moles of eggs. You might try that in calculator to make sure you're using scientific notation in your calculator correctly and make sure you can get that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So that number isn't very helpful to us. I'd much rather talk about four dozen eggs and go in and talk to the baker about it. I need 7.97 times 10 to the minus 23 moles of eggs because he'll never let you back in the store again. So I come down here and say, okay, what about if I convert this number of people into moles? That's, that's 6.45 billion people. Certainly that's got to be quite a few moles. I take it and I divide it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd right here. What do I get? 10 to the minus 14th moles of people. Still not very helpful at all. If I take and look at atoms now, if I have 7.45 times 10 to the 24th atoms of nitrogen, then I divide it by 6.02 times 23rd, this guy has a has a kind of 12.4 moles of atoms of nitrogen. Okay, now that's fine. Now remember, we still can't count out these atoms at all, but we notice that number is much more convenient to work with that huge number of atoms and molecules we'll be using. So we're shifting our thought process from dozens and, and gross and reams into thinking about moles. Okay, just another way of talking about those things. Uh, I make a note down here, uh, try the calculations, only that, right down here it says try it in a calculator. Make sure you enter those things correctly to get those answers out in the back end because there's nothing worse than setting up a problem and getting it wrong because you had a calculator issue going on. Okay, so, so let's take a look at the importance of Avogadro's number to us, what it, what it tells us about. We're going to start off with donuts again. I guess I'm obsessed with donuts. Uh, and so <clears throat> in counting donuts, counting reams of paper, counting pencils, that really isn't very difficult to do. It can be done. It's tedious and it's tiresome and all, but it's not impossible to do. Let's go back to donuts for a minute. Now let's think about this. Suppose you have a semi-truck filled with donuts, individual little donuts. Don't eat them because they're a mess. They've been in a semi. And you want to know how many donuts you had in there. Well, you could do it by starting to count them, but you might realize that's a lot. A semi-truck's like 53 feet long, it's pretty tall, it's pretty wide, it has lots and lots of donuts in it, so you may not want to do it that way. You need to think of some better way to be able to do that. So what you might think about is, well, let's grab a donut, let's get the mass, <laughs> how many grams there are, in a donut, and then we'll get the mass of the stuff in the truck, because they do st that all the time on balance, as you can figure out the mass in the truck. And when we do that, all we have to do is we just take and divide the mass of the truck by the mass of an individual donut. So making numbers up, if easy numbers up, if the truck had a mass of donuts of 100 pounds and each donut was a pound, that's 100 donuts. Okay. Certainly donuts aren't a pound and the truck would have more than that, but that's okay. So we can hopefully you can kind of get an idea of how that works. It gives you approximately how many are in the truck. Well. Let's now go to shift to atoms and molecules. We go to shift to atoms and molecules. Here's the deal that happens here. Is now, okay, now we want to find out how many moles of, let's say, water we have in a glass of water. Instead of dozens, it's moles because we're counting atoms and molecules and stuff. And so you have a glass of water. You want to know how many moles of water molecules you have in there. Well, it's not likely you're going to be pulling out these water molecules and counting them one by one since you can't see them, you can't manipulate them, you can't do anything with them. And so what we have to do is go through a backdoor approach and say something like, well, maybe if we knew how many molecules of water were in a certain mass of water, we could get the mass of our glass and divide it just like we did the donuts in the truck. We could do the same kind of thing. So <coughs> what we could do is just take and find the mass of one water and, and find the mass of our glass, divide it by the mass of one mole of water, and then go from there. And it turns out that's an easy thing to do because we have the periodic table. That's the water. <sighs> Suppose I had, f okay, so uh, we get here in the mole and periodic table. So what we can understand is this. If you look at this guy in here, look at the periodic table, this abbreviated version down here so you can actually read it. The atomic number, of course, is the number of protons that you have in that atom. We know that from before. 
Okay, so oxygen has 8, uh, fluorine has 9, silicon has 14. We know those numbers, okay? Or we can find them on our table. The other number you have in the box is called the atomic mass of the element. Okay, so for boron, the atomic mass is 10.81. For carbon, it's 12.011. For oxygen, it's 15.9994. Fortunately, we can round most of them completely to boron you might call it a 10.8 but 12.0 was called 12 call nitrogen 14 call oxygen 16 fluorine 19 don't worry too much about it so one of them we use sometimes in the middle chlorine is about a 35 and a half but we don't get carried away with all those decimal places what that tells me what that number tells me is it says now that if um, i weigh out that number of grams of stuff so if i have aluminum here if i weigh out 27 grams of aluminum in that 27 gram sample, I've got Avogadro's number of aluminum atoms. So I don't have to count the aluminum atoms, I just get the mass. And then I know how many I've got. And it's a very, very convenient way of handling this in terms of, um, in, in terms of being able to relate masses, things we can work with and see and do and, and deal with, to what's actually happening on the molecular and atomic level. And so that's one of the things that's very, very important about the Avogadro's number and the molds. So one of the things we'll come to is this idea that if we have, you know, elements, you can look at the atomic mass, say, oh, that's going to be it. But if I have compounds, so I have water, it has H2O, ammonium chloride, looks like that, calcium nitrate has that formula. I want to know if I take and I add up the atomic weights of everything. So hydrogen is one right here, and there are two hydrogens. And oxygen is 16 and there is one oxygen so I'll add these guys all up and what I get is 18. If I look at ammonium chloride I'm going to add in one nitrogen times 14 because that's his atomic mass, four hydrogens times one because that's their atomic mass, one chlorine times 35 and a half is 53 and a half. And same thing for calcium nitrate. Notice in calcium nitrate here when I go to add them up that parentheses, remember we put parentheses around there. When I put the parentheses, it means that I have two of everything inside of parentheses, twice of that. <laughs> and so I'll have two nitrogens, two times the one there is two nitrogens, and two times three here is six oxygens out here. So I can add those guys up and we give them a name, and it varies a little bit as to what we call it. If it's a covalent compound, a molecular compound like water is, we call it a molecular mass. If it's an ionic compound like ammonium chloride or like calcium nitrate, it's going to be called a formula mass. So ionic is formula, molecular is, uh, is a covalent or molecular compound. In the end, it's a fine point. It's just, it's just a matter of you're going to do the same thing whether it's molecular or ionic. You take and add up all the atomic weights. That's how many grams you have in a mole of that material. And we actually have another name for that too, just to make sure we're totally confused, is we very often call that the, the molar mass, and that's my favorite. The molar mass tells me here's how many grams you have in a mole. So we could say that for water, since his molecular mass is 18, that's really the weight of one molecule of water in really tiny units, atomic mass units, but since I have 18 here, I can say I have 18 grams in one mole of water. If I have 18 grams of water, I've got Avogadro's number of molecules. If you want to think about that in terms of size, that's like a, I don't, I don't know the exact conversion, but like a quarter of a cup, half a cup, something like that of water, has Avogadro's number of water molecules in it. That's a lot. Okay. So what we'll do is we're going to practice in the next unit how we go back and forth between these two.